Welcome back. You're still tuned in to Midcap Radar. Well, let's get a conversation going now. Lubrisol uh, Corporation, which is the wholly owned subsidiary of Berkshire Hathaway. The company is in focus today. And earlier today, I spoke to Rebecca Liebert, the president and CEO of the Lubrisol Corporation. I began by asking her the destocking and pricing pressure in the chemicals industry is behind us. Let's listen in to what she had to say and a lot more. I think that the destocking that we saw in 2023 is generally behind us. And we're starting to see that demand and supply come in balance and um, we're seeing you know, a good strong recovery. Okay, so recovery is on its way, something that the chemicals uh, stakeholders would definitely like. Let's talk about your plans in India because you have committed big capex here, you have investment plans. Uh, which are the areas where you are looking at demand coming back or a demand, potential demand, so to say? And which are the areas where you're looking at investing that $150 million that you had spoken about earlier? Yeah, let me uh, break it into some different areas for us. So our $150 million investment was for CPVC. Uh, that's used to deliver clean water to homes in India, and we're really excited about that opportunity. The investment in India in infrastructure is really fueling a lot of the demand for CPVC. Now, on top of that, the opportunity in India is broad when you think about the middle class. And Lubrizol has a great portfolio of products that are aimed at that middle class, whether it's beauty care, personal care, and many things for areas like tennis shoes and uh, consumer products. So we're really excited about the opportunity there. Okay, so are you in conversations with more companies here, or some potential agreements that you know investors or the stakeholders could look at? Uh, there's many uh, big brands in India that we work with and we're super excited to see all those opportunities come to fruition. Okay, so uh, you know when you're talking about uh, this big demand push that is coming in India specifically, um, uh, can you tell us the growth plans here? Six and a half billion dollars, that's the revenue target that generally globally Lubrizol has, if I'm uh, not mistaken. How much would India contribute to that? How big would India be as a pie of your total revenues or growth for that matter? India is about 10% in the region of uh, our global uh, revenue and we see that uh, growing dramatically over the years to come. We see that the opportunity to more than double our revenue in India in the next five years. Okay, more than double the revenues that you have currently. Uh, you know, when we talk about chemicals, one word that always comes up is the China theme because uh, that is a major in the chemicals industry. And despite whatever shutdowns or whatever headwinds that China faced, it is still continuing higher production. How do you look at China as a chemicals major? Do you think the leadership that they have will continue? Or are you seeing demand going to other countries as well? Well, China put a lot of infrastructure in the ground in the last several years. And I think that that infrastructure will need to be consumed, right? The, the, the capacity coming off of that infrastructure will need to be consumed. But the great news is we have a global growing chemical demand. And uh, over time that, uh, that you know, demand will be consumed off of those assets as other areas also start to come online. So I don't see a big issue with China demand and supply becoming imbalance over the years to come as, adi again, additional demand comes into the marketplace. Okay, so demand is not a problem at all when it comes to right. chemicals. Uh, you know, that was one, China's one. The other major, uh, I would say, usage or the user of chemicals would be Europe. Do you think the issues that Europe faced earlier in terms of gas pricing and as a market, that is something which is also done away with? Uh, I do think that Europe is going to continue to have some slowness and uh, we're seeing a lot of capacity in Europe come offline. Uh, but Europe, I think, also will rebalance uh, as the global chemical industry finds its new footing. And uh, we'll see that those value-added products produced in Europe will stay in Europe. And those that maybe are more commoditized might come from other regions of the world. Okay, all right. Um, so... Uh what is happening uh, in India other than the plans that you've told me? I want to understand because you said that India is going to be the big focus point for you going forward as well. Grasim, the plan that was uh, that commenced CPVC production, what is the progress like there? Um, are you looking at any more agreements entering into with the Aditya group? Well, today we're really focused on building the plant that we've already communicated. Uh, we've had our groundbreaking, um, the the progress on the project is going along as we expected. So we're really excited to see that project continue to move forward. Uh, relative to other areas of focus for us in the region, uh, we have a joint venture with Indian Oil Company for additives. And you know, as we see more demand for 
cars and transportation in India, we think that's a great area for growth. So we're excited about what's you know, what the potential is there. Okay, in CPVC, uh, you do have uh, agreements, not only with Grasim, there are other companies like Prince Pipe, some, somewhere you entered into an agreement back in 2020. Um, earlier you had it with Astral, which is the other big pipe player in the country. Um, is, are these contracts long-term contracts or you move on uh, once that particular project gets uh, completed? Well, I don't want to talk about our customer contracts in particular, but what I'll say is we are an industry leader in CBVC yeah. pipe in the region. And, um, you know, our brand is really strong. We really work to promote and to support those plumbers that every single day install our pipe to deliver clean water to homes in India. So our focus is really ensuring that our customers and their customers, which are the plumbers, ultimately have the product they need to do the job. And, and we really work to make the job of the plumber easier because our, pro, uh, you know, our product, our pipe, really goes together well. So that's our focus. Uh, and um, we do a good job with that. We'll have a lot of customers. <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that we can see every other day in this listed space. We do see a lot of releases with Lubrizol uh, mentioned there. So we do take that point. Uh, you know, you spoke about fuel and lubricant additives and that market growing as well. We are talking a lot about electric vehicles. Do you think there'll be enough balance made here or that could be a potential threat or a risk? Well, look, electric vehicles are here, and we think electric vehicles have a place, but we also think that the internal combustion engine isn't going away anytime soon, uh, particularly for heavy duty, for motorcycles, uh, and for passenger cars. Look, um, you know, you have to have a lot of infrastructure to have electric vehicles, the charging stations and all that. And over time, that will build out, but it's going to take some time. And until then, we're prepared to invest and continue to support the additives market for you know lubricants and fuels and and that's a big push for us today oh yes and that's where you've been focusing on as well so in uh, you know we were speaking about it off air as well and i would like to ask you because there's so much innovation happening be it in the chemicals industry be it other industries as well so uh, a lot of indian companies have announced foray into say battery chemicals other kind of chemicals uh, do you think that would be the way to go and that is something that most of the chemical companies will focus on? What are the changes that you're seeing globally? You, you're spearheading such a big organization. Uh, what are the changes in the chemical industries that you've seen in the last couple of years that you think would continue? Some trends that you can talk about? Yeah, well look, I think it's easy to say maybe we want to go into other chemicals, but our core technology uh, is where we want to stay focused on because we believe that there's a lot of opportunity for growth just within our core. We mentioned a little earlier about the consumer products and that mid-market. Uh, think about the consumption in India today. It's a fraction on a per person basis of what the consumption is in other parts of the world, whether it's Europe or the US or China. So we have a tremendous opportunity as that mid-market family starts to consume at levels in other parts of the world. So we're really excited about you know, personal care products um, and well-being products for that mid-market family. We have products that go into air conditioners and refrigerators, and these are, you know, items that I think everyone's going to want to have in India over time. The big consumption boom is what you are, uh, you know, uh, talking about. So amongst all your markets, is India the fastest growing market? What kind of growth rates are you looking at here? Uh, India, I would say, is our fastest growing market. Uh, you know, we believe that there's going to be high single digits to even maybe double digits, depending on the in market segment. Um, and with, you know, such a large population, we think that that growth is going to be here for, you know, decades to come. Well, a very interesting conversation there with you, Sonal. But now, as we slip into a short break, we have an announcement to share with you all. We are launching CNBC TV 18's first ever live personal finance webinar. CNBC TV18 Accelerate Personal Finance Handbook. This is with Sonia Shinoy, where she will be joined by three well-known experts on Saturday 11th May 9 a.m. onwards. We'll be diving into everything you need to know to master your finances and learn how to grow your wealth, be it insurance, tax savings, managing your portfolio, retirement planning. There's a lot to learn and a lot to do. Whether you're in your 20s, 30s or even 40s, this live webinar is for you. We have limited seats, so don't miss this chance. Register now. Scan the QR code to register or log on to cnbctv18.com and we will see you on 11th May.